Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerintrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will review how to transform a matrix into its row echelon form and its reduced row echelon form. So let's start with some definition. A matrix A is considered to be in row echelon form, also notated as A. R E F. This is a matrix in row echelon form. So a matrix A is considered to be in its row echelon form when it adheres to the following conditions. Number one, the first non zero element in each row of that matrix, called the leading entry, is one. Second, each leading entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. And thirdly, rows with all zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. Now a matrix A is in its reduced row echelon form, also notated as A R R E F. This is the reduced row echelon form. So a matrix is considered to be in its reduced row echelon form when it satisfies the following conditions. Number one, the matrix is in its row echelon form. So all the all the definitions and um, conditions previously mentioned for row echelon form are met. And number two, the leading entry in each row is, in the, is the only non-zero entry in its column. So how do we go about transforming a matrix into its echelon form? Well first, any matrix can be transformed into its echelon forms using a series of elementary row operations. And if you recall from a previous video review, we went over uh, uh, elementary row operations, so we will definitely be putting them to use in this tutorial or in this review. So there's a couple things we need to do. When we're given some matrix, um, we need to first determine the, the first pivot of that matrix. And once we find uh, that pivot, which is the first non-zero entry in the first column of the matrix. Uh, we need to interchange it so it's at the the pivot row is at the top of the matrix. We then uh, multiply each element in the pivot row by the inverse of the pivot so that the pivot equals 1. And then we add multiples of the pivot row to each of the following rows. so every element in the pivot column below the pivot point equals zero. And to continue on with our process, we just move to the next pivot in the matrix, ignoring the original one, until we finally get to our row echelon and reduced row echelon form. So that's a lot of verbiage, and it's probably best illustrated through an example. So let's just do that. Let's say we have a matrix 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 7, 8. So in this matrix, let's reduce it first to the row echelon form and then put it into its reduced row echelon form. So the first step, like I mentioned, is to find the pivot, the first non-zero entry in the first column of the matrix. So the first non-zero entry in the first column is going to be 1. So now that we've found the first non-zero entry in the first column of our matrix, that is called our pivot. Now what we want to do is interchange so interchange the rows so this pivot row is at the top of the matrix. So that leads to our new matrix of 1, 2, 
one, zero, one, two, two, seven, eight. So if this is matrix A, we'll call this A1. Now we will continue to do elementary row operations until we satisfy all the necessary conditions to have a row ech or matrix in row echelon form. So once again, we want to we want to make sure that all the all the elements below our pivot, which is now right here, our next step is to make sure all the elements below in that column of our pivot are equal to zero. So now we need to get rid of this too. And we can do that by doing an elementary row operation of multiplying the first row by two, negative two, and adding that result to the third row. So in our head, we can quickly do that as um, negative one or negative two times one add that to 2 and we got 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Add that to 7 and that's 3. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 8 is 6. And then all of the remainder rows remain the same. Just like that. So we're one step closer to having this matrix reduced to its row echelon form. But we're not there yet. So the next step is, is, is to continue working this matrix until we are satisfied with our results. Now working with this matrix 2, we can multiply each element of row 2 by negative 3 and add that result to row 3 to get rid of this negative 3 or this 3 right here in the last row. So let's do that. We got negative 3 times 0 plus z is 0. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Once again, the remainder rows of our matrix remains the same. And now we are actually at our reduced row echelon form. Now we're at our reduced row echelon form because this matrix right here adheres to all the conditions that we set prior to um, prior in defining a, redu a row echelon form. And that's the first non-zero element in each row called the leading entry is one. So we got this is the first element. It's one and one. And now in this third row, the first, uh, the first non-zero element there isn't. So that still satisfies um, our definition. Now the second uh, condition was that each leading zero entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. So once again, our first leading entry is row one, column one. Our second leading entry is right to the right in column two of row two. And then finally, rows with all zero elements, if any, which we have one, all row with zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. So our, um, our non-zero row is at the very bottom. So this matrix is considered reduced, or sorry, is considered row echelon form. So now we need to move, uh, continue to reduce it one last time to get it into our reduced row echelon form. And we can do that by getting rid of um, this 2 right here. And if we can get rid of that 2, then um, the remainder of our conditions will be met to... Uh, for this matrix to be in reduced row echelon form. So to do that, 
uh, working with this matrix, we multiply the second row by negative 2 and add it to the first row. So uh, real quickly, we go negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 plus or times 2 is negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 and then all the re remainder of the rows remain the same and that's our reduced row echelon form now this is our reduced row echelon form because number one all the all the uh, original conditions from the reduced or sorry the row echelon form remain the same nothing has changed there so we fulfill that condition and number two the leading entry in each row is the only non-zero entry in its column so here's the leading entry of row one it is the only non-zero entry in that column now our second leading entry is right here in the second column and once again it is the only non-zero in that column and now there's in the third row there's no leading entry it's all zeros so it's okay that we have numbers in this column non-zero um, entries because there's no leading entry in this third row which would be the third column so that's it guys that's how you get a matrix into its row echelon form and it's reduced row echelon form it's just a number of elementary matrix operations that gets us to the point that we want to be so if you guys have any questions hop on over to engineerintrainingexam.com and shoot me some feedback or suggestions or um, you know just contact me to say hi either way I'm here to help so if you guys have any requests for uh, future videos just let me know alright take care Bye.